Hey everybody, Drone Tech here. Welcome back. Remember back when being a whistleblower was something touted as heroic by the Democrats and the media? Of course, that's when the whistleblowers were coming out against Republicans and Donald Trump. As you may have guessed, now it's completely different when the whistleblowers are exposing corrupt Democrats within the DOJ and the FBI. And we're gonna get right into this disturbing story right after I quickly tell you about this free coin offer from supportthesecond.com. This episode brought to you by supportthesecond.com. The recent shootings, especially those in schools, is bringing about stricter gun reform bills. Congress has just passed the most significant gun reform bill we've seen in decades. But as we all know, bad guys will always have access to guns. The Support the Second Coin usually retails for $24.95, but it's currently free for a limited time to bring awareness to the issues affecting gun owners today. Get your free Second Amendment coin today by going to www.supportthesecond.com. If you're proud to be an American and proud of your gun rights, you'll love this Second Amendment coin. You should have heard by now that there are new whistleblowers from the FBI who are claiming that they're being used to cover up Biden family crimes and interfere in elections. But maybe you haven't heard about it because it hasn't been a major story anywhere but what you might call right-leaning media. It's in this current environment that they've created that it's totally normal and not at all a very bad side of things to come that AG Merrick Garland a guy who almost sat on the Supreme Court, he almost made it, thanks to Trump he didn't. Actually, he may be more dangerous as an attorney general, so we'll see how that ends up. But that guy is openly threatening Justice Department personnel who might be thinking about becoming a whistleblower. Garland said that all communications with Congress must be handled by the Office of Legislative Affairs per DOJ policy. No department employee may communicate with senators, representative, congressional committees, or congressional staff without advanced coordination, consultation, and approval by the OLA. That seems pretty suspect. I know that that is apparently the policy, but that's uh, very suspect, especially given the standards that were set during Trump and when Lieutenant Colonel Vidman came out as a whistleblower against Trump. And you'll remember when he did that, he ignored the chain of command. He went straight uh, to uh, Senator Schumer, I believe. Like I said, this is the whole point of being a whistleblower in the first place, isn't it? If they're going through the the chain of people who are corrupt in the first place, then there's nothing, nothing's gonna come of that. And there is such a thing as the Whistleblower Protection Act that protects them from threats like those coming from Merrick Garland right now, which Garland hilariously says were not intended to conflict with or limit whistleblower protections. Strange, I seem to remember that same sort of language used when FBI Director Comey let Hillary Clinton off the hook saying that she didn't intend to break the law. One more thing about Vindman. Now, he was a hero in the media, you'll remember, but it actually turns out that the only reason that he came out against Trump was to save Biden, to save his chances in the coming election. Uh, he says right here, Vindman explained in the late summer of 2019 that he believed Trump was on the brink of succeeding in pressuring Ukrainian pres president uh, to announce investigations into corruption in Ukraine that would include the questionable business dealings of Hunter Biden, candidate Biden's drug addict addicted son. It was a vul vulnerable moment for the Democratic contender. I don't know what I would have done in that case, Vindman said, but the current president, President Biden, would absolutely have been harmed. And who knows if he would have ended up the Democrat nominee because President Trump had realized his corrupt enterprise. Like, what? Is Vindman admitting there that Biden's corrupt and Trump was on the verge of discovering it, so that's why he did this? I mean, these people are everything that they accuse us of being. And it's more than a little concerning now that Attorney General Merrick Garland is out there threatening potential whistleblowers who might be about to come forward to let us all know that, just exactly like we've been hearing already, that all of this stuff is completely partisan and driven by politics with the desire to get Trump out of the potential election running for 2024. And ultimately, it wouldn't, you know, if, if they succeed in this, it's not going to stop with him. And you know how I know this? Because Joe Biden went out there yesterday and was just openly threatening. I, I say he was threatening half of the country. He's giving extremists on the far left side, on his side, all the justification that they would need to take action against their political opponents. And for those brave right wing Americans who say it's all about keeping America, keeping America's independent and safe. If you want to fight against the country, you need an F-15. You need a, something a little more than a gun. 
No, I'm not joking. Think about oh, this. Think about the it's not hyperbole. Jack? And for those... So, <laughs> yeah, you just heard him right. First, he calls out right-wing Americans, which... I mean, I, I'm, I'm getting really tired of this sort of, of right-wing being used as pejorative, where left-wing is almost never even mentioned. Like, you never hear it in the media. They never talk about left-wing or far-left or left-wing extremism, even though we see lots of it. I mean, we saw a year's worth of it. But he uses this right-wing as a pejorative, and, I mean, people who probably don't even see themselves as political would be seen as right-wing by guys like Biden. And he says that... Uh, the only, that you right-wing Americans who want to protect American safety and independence, like, that's a bad thing? Which is odd rhetoric to me, when at the very same time, your entire narrative is based on this idea that your political opponents almost took over the country. We almost had a dictatorial leadership on January the 6th by a handful of unarmed people. Uh, at that same time, you can't fight a tyrannical government unless you have F-15s. And this is his argument for why you shouldn't be allowed to own guns. So it wasn't just Biden going out and oddly calling out half the country as some sort of threat to the country. Uh, his completely, utterly awful press secretary doubled down on this. And she was actually asked when the Biden regime is talking about these MAGA extremists, like, who are they talking about? So, um, can't talk about voters from here. What? As you know, no. oh. what? She's up here calling hundreds of million, like a hundred million people extremists and just basically saying that Republicans are extremists. This guy asks for her to differentiate. How does she know which ones are the regular GOP and which ones are the extremists? She says she can't talk about the voters now. Hmm. Oh, no, I, I get you. Uh, not gonna. I just need to say that, right? Just to, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> to not clear. right. Um, I mean, the the president has been has been really clear about the leadership, right? The MAGA Republicans uh, in leadership. Uh, they're the ones who have the platform. Uh, they're the ones who, uh, again, the extremist part of the Republican Party. Uh, they're the ones who, uh, you know, folks listen to. Okay, I can't listen to any more of this, but this is the actual threat, okay? As we've talked about, authoritarians can only be authoritarian with an institutional support base. Republicans nor Donald Trump have that, nor do they have power right now. Democrats have all that power. Democrats have the media. They have the institutions, the Department of Justice, the FBI, and they're using that to go after their political opponents on all fronts in the media, calling their opponents extremists saying that they should be treated as terrorists which happened on msnbc it's been happening on msnbc been happening on all the networks going back to before trump even it's really started during the obama years when the media would call republicans terrorists and suicide bombers for standing up against democrat legislation but before we go i do just want to show you this last thing to show you that the actual authoritarian threat the people that are trying to literally outlaw their political opponents which would lead to one party rule in a country where the party that's ruling has control of all the institutions, including the media, which is supposed to hold them to account, but which as we can see right now is not doing that. They are all unified and trying to stigmatize, ostracize, otherize, and impossible outlaw their political opponents. We are watching right now a very radical and extreme Republican party mirror what we have seen in other places like Nazi Germany, like other places like the Bolsheviks. We have seen this playbook before. We have seen a ruling party try to use things like propaganda, try to silence the free press, try to restrict what women can do. We have seen this play before and it always ends disastrously for the majority of people that are subjected to that. But the real quick, the ruling party is the Democrat party. It is the ruling party using propaganda, like the propaganda we're using right now to get rid of their political opponents. Like everything he just listed there are all things that the Democrats are doing. All right, folks, that's all I can take of that. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, please hit that like button, share, subscribe for sure, and then leave a comment to let us all know what you think about this stuff. Thanks a lot.